Listen to this autofocus. It's dark over there. How does it do that? That is unbelievable. Hello everybody and welcome to what is my first attempt at a serious review. Um, might not last very long. But while you're here, I'll crack on. This is the Panasonic Lumix G85 or G80. Uh, I don't know why it's called different things in different territories, but that seems to be a thing that some manufacturers do and I can do it as well. Bit weird, I'm sure they've got a reason for it. I bought this primarily as a video camera. Um, for a couple of standout features. First, the swivel screen. I know that's not a particularly unique feature for a camera these days, but it also has a mic socket, uh, can record in 4K, has amazing image stabilization, and is weather sealed, which can be quite important in the UK. But the short of it is that uh, it runs rings around the other camera that I was using for video, which is the Canon G9X. Um, now I know that's not really a fair comparison. These cameras aren't in the same class, but using this over the last few days, it's become very clear to me that this is very, very good at what it does. So uh, I'm gonna spend the next, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe, running through uh, some of my thoughts on this. And, um, and hopefully you'll find that in some way useful. I know that I'm a bit late to the party with this review. It's not particularly new, this camera anymore. And, uh, and Panasonic has since bought out the GH5. Still, um, let's crack on. Oh, I should also say that the other use I have in mind for this camera is as a backup stills camera to my D750 that I'm filming this on now. Uh, I've got a bit of a history with Micro Four Thirds cameras. I really, really enjoy using them. I think they're amazing, and I think they get a bit too much of a rough time from reviewers who can't really look past the small sensor. To my mind, there are a lot of advantages of using a smaller sensor camera, not least the weight. This is like a feather compared to a full frame camera, even a mirrorless full frame camera. And while that means that no, it won't match it in low light, there are loads of different technologies you can put in a camera with a small sensor like this that help counter that. So the stabilization within this is incredible. And also, if you don't wanna be shooting in really shallow depths of field, and I don't usually, then you don't have to stop down as much on a camera like this as you would on a full frame camera like the Nikon. What that means is that you rarely have to raise the ISO on a micro four thirds camera like you do on a full frame camera. So in lots of instances, the difference in low light performance between something like this and a full frame camera is negligible anyway. But you know, that's a debate for another day. Uh, but yeah, the other use of this camera will be as a secondary stills option um, and it will replace the OMD that was doing that job before. The only real gripe that I've got with Micro Four Thirds sensors is that obviously they can't match the dynamic range of a full frame sensor and that's important when you're compositing uh, because you need to be able to match light in different images and so having wide dynamic range allows you to do that more easily. But as a light and nimble option, these are great and, uh, and this will re now replace this. Cameras everywhere. Right, so I'll kick off with my only real complaint about this camera and it's to do with its design. So to demonstrate, I'll need my one and only mic. Uh, put that on there. So like I said before, it's quite clear that this camera was built, at least partly, to be a compelling option for videographers. Now it's all well and good that they give you a mic input, but who decided that they should put the mic input on the same side that they put the swivel screen. Because it means that you can't turn the screen when it's fully articulated. Now that's not that big a deal, but it also means that when you're looking at the screen, when it's facing that way, that you can't see all of it because you've got all this stuff. Who decided that? But I'm not joking when I say that that is my only gripe with this camera. This 12 to 60 kit lens that came with the camera is uh, is the best kit lens I've ever had by quite a long stretch. Um, in 35mm it's a 24 to 120, so it's a really versatile lens and it's not particularly quick. It's 3.5 at the wide end uh, and as you zoom towards telly it slows down even more. 
but it's really light, really sharp, and it has inbuilt stabilization that works with the camera to make the stabilization even better. As far as I can tell, there are only a handful of Panasonic lenses that have either got this built in or have had firmware updates to make the stabilization work better with stabilization within the newer cameras. So it's a super smart bit of kit. I think you can save yourself about 150 quid if you just go body only. Uh, with the G85. Having said that, even if you've got a really wide range of Micro Four Thirds lenses, I think even as a backup lens for 150 quid, this is an absolute bargain. And, uh, and I'm super impressed with it. It's also just a featherweight. I mean, by Micro Four Thirds standards, it's a big lens, but it doesn't feel like it. And, um, and so as I say, for a second lens, or like a holiday lens or something, or even just a vlogging lens, whatever, I think this is worth packing. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Autofocus. The the main camera this gets compared to is the Sony Sony A6500, and um, and I think when people talk about the Sony, the main advantage is autofocus. Sony and Canon are way ahead of pretty much all other companies in autofocus. Uh, but the reason I didn't go for the Sony over the G85 is that. A, I know the Sony battery life sucks, and B, it doesn't have an articulating screen. And it was a real deal breaker to me to be able to have this articulating screen and to uh, to just be able to sort of check that I don't look too hungover. And so far, I've been more than happy with what the G85 can do in terms of autofocus. I might live to eat those words, but for the time being, I'm very happy with what this camera can do. In focus. In focus. Focus, 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 focus. Uh, another thing people seem to like to talk about is 4K and recording in 4K and then down resing to 1080p to upload as 1080p. Uh, I've tried it, I think the 4K footage down res to 1080p definitely looks a bit nicer than just the footage recorded at 1080p, but for me, the difference isn't big enough to warrant all that extra data, all that extra backup time. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll consider how to do it best. But for now, I'm more than happy with what comes out of this camera recording 1080p. Is that lazy? Well, it's the early evening now, so I've, uh, I've come for a little walk in the woods, try not to stack it, basically. And I thought this was quite a good time to show you the stabilisation. So, basically, I've taken a shot with stabilisation on and a shot with stabilisation off. Now, the shot with stabilisation on, remember, is the full stabilisation. So, the 12 60 lens is working with the in-body stabilisation to make some sort of super stabilisation. don't really want to keep saying the word stabilisation, that's a bloody mouthful. Uh, the other shot is with all the stabilization off, so hopefully there's quite a big difference because if there's not, uh, it'd be a bit of a waste of time. But in the shots I've seen previously, I think actually it makes a really big difference and it's quite impressive. So here you go. The shot on the left is all the stabilization turned on, the shot on the right is uh, stabilization turned off. So if I'd brought a lens with me that didn't have stabilization, you can sort of imagine it would sit in the middle of them and be. A, a bit of a mix so you'd have a, a bit of stabilization but not as much as the one on the left yeah it looks different doesn't it Whew. pleased about that um i don't know what else there is to say i don't know how people do like hour-long reviews of things on youtube battery life um is good it's very good no complaints that concludes my review of the uh of the Panasonic Lumix G85. I hope that was in some way useful. I'm trying to decide whether my next progression for this camera is to pair it with a Panasonic 7 to 14 mil wide angle. I think that might be quite cool for video. I don't have anything super wide angle for Micro Four Thirds at the moment, apart from, ooh, fisheye. I don't think I'm gonna be doing too much vlogging with the fisheye, it's a bit weird. Ooh.